Okay, seniors, first lecture of the year here. We are right in the middle of the Civil War here. It's where we left off at the end of last year, so that's where we're starting. Um, we're starting in the winter of 1862. 1862 is a big year of the war. Um, <clears throat> we've gotten through not quite a full year of war by the winter of 1862. The main action that's been going on uh, over the course of the autumn and the winter has been the blockade. The North has been trying to prevent shipments of food, shipments of supplies, military supplies, arms, cannons, so forth, into the South uh, via the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico. And they've been fairly effective at it. Um, at the same time, they're also trying to prevent cotton from getting out of the South so that um, the Southerners can continue doing trade with, say, the British or the Europeans. Okay? So the blockade has shut this down, essentially. Not entirely. There's plenty of uh, materials that get back and forth. But considering the enormous task of blockading the entire Atlantic eastern seaboard, as well as the Gulf of Mexico, the Union Navy is doing a pretty good job uh, with the blockade. There was really um, one major battle in 1861 at Manassas, and that had been a victory for the South. The Union had been pushed back towards Washington, D.C., where the Army had to regroup. They were placed under the command of a General McClellan, and he really started getting the, sh the troops prepared for um, battle in a better way, training them very regularly. That's what the North was doing. So in the Eastern Theater, there was not a lot going on in terms of battles yet. The first big breakthrough in terms of a strategic breakthrough for the Civil War comes in what we call the Western Theater, okay? When we talk about the Civil War, when we talk about theaters, we're talking about the areas in which battles took place, the areas of conflict. So it's probably helpful to look at the map. Let's take a look. Okay, so when we talk about, hi, talk about the Eastern Theater, we're talking about, um, whoa, careful, primarily this area in Northern Virginia, sometimes into Maryland and Pennsylvania, but mostly in this area of Virginia. That's where most of the fighting is here in the Eastern Theater in 1862 and 3. In the West, what we're going to be talking about today is this area, right here in Northern Tennessee, Southern Kentucky, okay? That's where we're starting out in the Western Theater, all right? This is not the only two places where fighting took place, but in 1862, this is where uh, the fighting is going to be centered. Okay, so look, in the um, <clears throat> Western Theater, where we are there, um, <clears throat> we've got a divided leadership in the Union Army, okay? Um, and um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and put this under the title of Armies, and right now what we're talking about is the Battle of Fort Henry and Fort Donaldson, right? And so the two armies involved here, we can take a look at those. The Union Army is divided into two groups. You've got the Department of the Ohio and the Department of Missouri. Each one with its own general, commanding officer. Um, for Ohio, you've got a, a guy named Don Carlos Buell. For Missouri, you've got a guy named Henry Halleck. So whenever you've got divided leadership, sometimes that makes things a little ineffective because the, the two generals can't, they bicker with each other. They both want to be in charge. So that's actually what's going on here in the West for the Union in early 1862 is that these two guys can't get along with each other. Now, within the Department of the Missouri, we have a individual uh, who is a brigadier general. That's a lower ranking general. Uh, he commands a brigade and his name is Ulysses S. Grant. At this point, he's, again, a brigadier general, which is a lower-ranking general. You can just uh, abbreviate brigadier. All right. Now, <clears throat> Ulysses S. Grant in 1862, he has just come back into the Army the year before when the war broke out. He had been in the Army previously, but had retired in 1854 uh, due to um, uh, troubles with drinking alcohol. Too much alcohol and um, had been a huge embarrassment for him had to resign and had really never found a profession that he flourished in after that so he's kind of all through the 1850s floundering 
uh, essentially failing in one profession after another. And so by the time the war breaks out, it's an opportunity for him to redeem himself, okay? And um, <clears throat> he's, uh, of course, going to become a very important figure as we move forward. And one thing that he learns very quickly in 1861 in some minor skirmishes is that fear has a big impact on decision making. And it's very easy to underestimate that your opponent is subject to the same fears or even worse fears that you are. And so Grant realizes early on in 1861 that it's best to take an aggressive, offensive position in most battles because your opponent is struggling with doubt, struggling with fear, and it's hard for him to meet and match the aggression. Okay, So Grant really learns how to manage his own fear early in the war and to pursue more aggressive, more offensive tactics, and that's going to be a big, Im important thing for him moving forward. But at this point, he's kind of a minor guy, minor figure, commanding figure, but a minor officer, minors may be an extreme term, uh, a, a lower-ranking general, which is a big deal, but in the Department of the Missouri within the Union Army in the West. Okay. Now, as far as the Confederacy goes, um, <clears throat> They are all organized under the leadership in the West of a fellow named Albert Sidney Johnson. Albert Sidney Johnson was the Confederate general responsible for the uh, Confederates in the West. Okay? Now, we're talking about uh, the Battle of Fort Henry and Donaldson. Again, the first major breakthrough uh, for the North strategically in the war. And so what kind of, um, um, <clears throat> you know, what, what, what was the objective here? For the north. So let's talk about the objective. Uh, so strategy, tactics, and objective. So the Battle of Fort Henry and Donaldson, this is a Union offensive. meaning the Union is going to go on the aggressive, uh, aggressive side of things, and they're trying to invade the South, okay? Now, they are concentrating their forces at a place called Cairo, Illinois. Cairo, Illinois was important because it was the southernmost city within the Union. And so you had um, soldiers gathering there, um, getting ready for an invasion of the South. It was also important because it provided access into three rivers. And if you could control these rivers, then you would have a much easier time invading and occupying the South because you could move soldiers in quickly and supplies in quickly. So these three rivers are the Mississippi River, the Tennessee River, and the Cumberland River. So the Union objective here is to move from Cairo, Illinois, and to then gain control of these three rivers so that they can move soldiers and supplies quickly and easily into the south. So let's take another look at the map real quick so you get an idea of this. All right. So here is approximately where Cairo is, southern part of Illinois here. All right. Here is the Mississippi River the most important river in the nation, certainly in, in uh, regards to the Civil War, okay? The Mississippi River is very heavily guarded by forts up and down the river. The most important fort is around here at Columbus, a little island. It's called the Gibraltar of the West, okay? The other rivers in question here is the Tennessee River, and then here is the Cumberland River. And if you notice, the Cumberland River hits Nashville, the capital of Tennessee, one of the southern states, Confederate states. And at Nashville, there's an ironworks. Um, it's the second biggest ironworks in the Confederacy, very important for the South in terms of producing cannon and other munitions. Another big thing about this area is that if you get access to this land, there's all sorts of, uh, you know, uh, grain fields and uh, areas where people are raising horses. So lots of resources available to the south. Uh, but if the north gets hold of this, you're going to deprive the south 
of its second biggest ironwork, as well as a lot of uh, grain, as well as a lot of horses. But most importantly, if you can get control of these rivers, you get a straight shot down here into Mississippi and Alabama, okay? And if you can get down into this river, the Tennessee River in particular, then you can come from the rear and attack Memphis, and you can attack forts along the Mississippi from the rear. So that's a, a little bit of the um, strategic objective there in the, the Battle of Forts Donaldson and Henry, okay? Now, again, we mentioned that Ulysses S. Grant, the brigadier general, he was the guy who had kind of uh, come to terms with managing his fears, and he was the one who proposed an action here at Fort Donaldson and Fort Henry. The two head honchos of the Department of the Missouri and the Department of the Ohio, Halleck and Buell, could not agree with each other. So Grant proposes a joint action of the uh, Union Navy, freshwater Navy, meaning the Navy that works in the rivers, and the Army. And he says, look, the Cumberland and the Ohio rivers are much less heavily fortified than the Mississippi, so that's where we need to hit first. We need to hit the Cumberland and the Tennessee rivers. And so the first spot there that we're going to hit is this place, Fort Henry, okay? And um, <clears throat> Grant was absolutely right that this fort was a lot less well defended than anything along the Mississippi River, okay? So Grant chose wisely, and he convinced his commander, Henry Halleck, to go for it, okay? <clears throat> so, Battle of Fort Henry. Um, <clears throat> on February 5th, 1862, you had uh, transport ships moving down the um, <clears throat> Tennessee River, towards Fort Henry, and transport ships are carrying what? Well, they're carrying soldiers, army men, who are going to be uh, participating in the invasion of the South, okay? And there's 15,000 guys they're moving down there. And along with the soldiers, you have um, <clears throat> ironclad gunboats, and they're designed to be able to move, very, uh, to move over very shallow water, as you might get in a river sometimes. Okay, and they're protecting the transports. And they land south of Fort Donaldson. Sorry, they land south of Fort Henry, okay? And, and Fort Henry is, is again, it's kind of a, a, a really sad little fort with not much going for it and a few guns. And so they're able to, to get on land, move up, and take the fort. The soldiers there at Fort Henry capitulate pretty quickly. They retreat uh, across land to Fort Donaldson, okay? And uh, Fort Donaldson is just across the way on the Cumberland River, okay? And um, Grant vows he's going to go right away and take Fort Donaldson. He's going to say he's going to take it by uh, the 8th of February. He has to wait a few days for the rain. He makes an attempt to uh, take Fort Donaldson on February 12th. It fails. He gets uh, a reinforcement of soldiers on February 14th. And so then you have a situation here at Fort Donaldson where you've got... Um, <clears throat> about uh, 25,000 Union soldiers in the area. And so you've got, uh, on the one hand, you've got Donaldson uh, on one side here, and then there's a little bit of green space between the two rivers, if you can see. Um, so Donaldson is on the Cumberland River here, and Henry is across the way on the Tennessee River. So it's a little green space between the two, the two rivers. That's the, the land we're talking about. And you've got about 25,000 Union troops in that area. You've got 12,000 Confederates defending Fort Donaldson. The rest had been sent down to defend Nashville, okay? And um, <clears throat> so the fighting breaks out on February 14, 1862. And um, <clears throat> the first thing that happens is you had some, some uh, Union ships trying to get past Fort Donaldson. So the Confederate guns at the fort start firing on them. And um, the Confederates attempt to break out through the Union uh, troops that are massing outside of their fort. They almost succeed in doing it, but they ultimately fail. What happens is the commanders, the Confederate commanders in Fort Donaldson, lose their nerve kind of at the last minute. They decide that it's better not to keep fighting. And they might have made it through and gotten to Nashville had they kept fighting, but instead they capitulate, they give up. And so Fort Donaldson also falls to 
the Union. And so the Union has now, at, by taking Fort Donaldson and Fort Henry, they've gained access to the Cumberland and the Tennessee rivers. It's a short amount of time before Nashville, the capital of Tennessee, has to be evacuated by the Confederacy on February 23rd, less than a month later. And so that's when, a, you know, it's a huge breakthrough for the North. And, and it, it is also uh, now Southern troops are going to be shifting over to Tennessee to try to meet this invasion of the North, which is going to be starting to pour down through these two rivers. And this is the first big breakthrough, the first big moment when you have um, <clears throat> uh, a real successful invasion now of the South by the North. Okay. That's Fort Donaldson and Fort Henry.